Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with more old world goodness. God, I've said that a lot over the last while, huh? But I do enjoy the old world goodness and I want to continue doing it for as long as humanly possible. We are back in the world of Bretonia right now and we are working on a very special miniature. At least it's special to me. It has had somewhat of a mixed re response by the community about this miniature coming out. This is of course the released 2009 miniature or 2006 miniature from Games Day. So this was intended to be a Games Day miniature from 2006 and it was swapped out with a Skaven Warlord which is actually the same Skaven Warlord I did in a video a couple of weeks ago so if you want to check out what the model that is and you're curious you can go check that out as well. So this model was shelved for whatever reason and was never released and then of course they re-brought out the old world and then they talked about it in one of the articles, one of the videos that they kind of remembered it exists. Hey, what happened with that miniature? Is that still there? Do we still have the moles for that? And they went down and found the moles and started casting them up and selling them, which I think is amazing. It's a model that I didn't even know existed, but now I'm super happy to have in my collection. It showed up at my front door this morning. The postman brought it here today and I Im immediately dropped everything I was planning to do today and did a video on him because I was just so excited to get him painted. He's of course the beautiful new foot knight with great weapon. It's a lord on foot with great weapon. He comes with his retainer, his squire carrying his helmet, which I think is a beautiful little touch. And obviously a lot of people had problems with this model's face. And I'm gonna paint it up for myself here today and see whether those problems actually exist or whether the painter who did it for Games Workshop maybe went a little bit overboard and narrowed up his face more than he needed to be. Now, before I get into that video, I just wanna take a second to do the normal segment where I talk to you guys about how you can support and help me grow my channel. I know it's not the most exciting part of a video, but it is of course super important for all of us creators moving forward to help us grow bigger and better. So of course the most e easiest way for you guys to support is on Patreon. There are links in the description below that will allow you to go there and you can check out all the different tiers. The only one that's useless is the free tier. It does absolutely nothing for you. On my Patreon, I do a daily vlog, keeping you guys updated with what I'm doing in the hobby, how it's going, video plans, ideas, and you guys get to help me kind of shape and design the content and basically tailored directly for you guys. There's also access to a private Discord server, and we're going to be doing monthly giveaways for extra stuff. If that's something that interests you, please do check it out below. Also, if you want to just do purchases, for instance, if you want to buy some Games Workshop stuff and you live in England, there's my Element Games link below as well. If you click on that and you want to purchase stuff, you'll save yourself up to 15% on all the different products. I'll get a nice little kickback and it will cost you absolutely nothing extra. The rest of it is make sure that you like, subscribe and comment on the video. That does help immensely. Okay, now that our spiel is out of the way, let's get stuck into painting this Bretonian Lord. Okay, this is the Bretonian Lord with Great Weapon miniature that, like I said in the intro, was supposed to be out in 2009 or 2006. And they, uh, for Games Day, it's supposed to be the Games Day exclusive miniature, and it got swapped out. It consists of two miniatures. You get this fabulous Lord here with his gigantic cape, holding his pair of gloves in his one hand and his sword in a downward kind of relaxed pose in the other. He, my favorite feature of this model is the shield on his back. It is a beautiful shield and one that I was very much looking forward to painting. He obviously comes with his squire. Now, like I said in the intro, he looks fairly young to be a squire. Maybe he's just a page. I don't know. Um, but he's carrying his uh, antler topped helmet. Very much reminds me of like a House Baratheon style thing from Game of Thrones. And then his beautiful great sword held in a downward pose. I gave these guys a little bit of thin cork on their base, add a little bit more texture and variety. Obviously there's a, it would be a very much a lot of flat surface otherwise, especially for the little squire dude. And then I got the model sprayed black and then a zenithal spray of gray seer with a rattle can as well to give me a really nice starting point for these models. Okay, so the first color we're gonna go for is uh, the Griffhound orange contrast. And we're going to use this on a bunch of the different cloth material on this guy. So obviously he has the um, red and black color scheme on the packaging. Um, and I was very tempted to do him in the red and black because I do have a lot of my infantry painted in that scheme. But once I saw this stag emblem on his shield, I was like, no, that's a different house entirely. And it turns out that I did my grail knight, my favorite grail knight that I did in the orange and black scheme. I gave him the stag symbol as his like personal heraldry. So I decided that he would be part of that same noble house. So I kind of followed that kind of idea through. After the orange contrast, move over to black Templar. <clears throat> and we're gonna do the opposite area. So I didn't want to try and quarter the model or anything like that. 
quartering the shield was easy enough to do. It's actually designed that way. It has like lines already designed into it. If more Bretonian shields had those lines in it, it would make it a lot easier for people to do those quartered schemes across the models. But in this case, I did the quarter on the shield and then I just decided to do kind of orange and black alternating parts on uh, the rest of the model. So the majority of his cape did indeed go black, except for all the trim along the bottom went orange. And it's the same with the, uh, the kind of front parts of him. The majority of it was orange, but I gave him kind of black sleeves. Um, and obviously his cape goes up and over his shoulder, so it's enough black for me there. So I was trying to find a nice balance between the orange and the black. Gorgrunt of fur was my choice color for all of the straps and leathery bits. So he does have, obviously his leather belt holding on his uh, kind of religious symbols and icons and stuff like that that are dangling from his belt. But he also has quite a large leather uh, sheath for his sword. It has lots of embellishment on it, but it is, in, at the end of the day, uh, leather. Um, and I guess that makes the most sense if you've got a huge, big, broad sword across your back. Think about, you know, Braveheart. If you had this huge, big steel kind of sheath across your back as you were drawing and trying to fight with it, it would be in the way. So something softer like leather. So when you draw the sword, it kind of the sheath then just bends around your body and is a lot easier to use. I think makes a lot more sense. Why he carries a shield as well. Maybe it's just to show off his house emblem. Maybe it's just a little bit of extra protection on your back. Obviously, you cannot wield a great sword and a shield at the same time. So who knows? Not that I'm arguing. Like I said, the shield is my favorite part of this model. So I am very much glad that it has been incorporated into him. Time for a silver to pick out all those armored details. He does have little armored feet and armored legs. He's got a bit of chainmail coming out from the front, but the rest of the model is pretty much covered by his cloth and his fabric, <clears throat> except for, of course, his big sword. So make sure that you do get the blade of the sword as well. There is loads of other details like rings. And he's got like a circlet thing on his head and <clears throat> other bits like that. So I decided to do those with retributor armor gold after the silver. I wanted him, like I said, he is a Bretonian Lord. He is uh, in good standing in uh, the Bretonian hierarchy, so I think he's going to have lots of nice little trinkets and details. So that's where, like I said, Retributor Armor does come into its own. And we're going to use this for all those details. So the big fleur de lis pommel on his sword. The cross guard and pommel are actually designed in the shape of the fleur de lis, which is nice. And like I said, don't forget things like his rings and the circle on his head and other bits like that. Now, there has been a bunch of what's known as unreleased miniatures. So I know that's a bizarre thing, but these unreleased miniatures do actually exist in the world. I don't know how many of these guys ever made it out of the Games Workshop uh, kind of head office building. But back in the day when certain miniatures were designed and sculpted and they were chosen not to be put into production, it was very much a more relaxed environment in um, head office back in those days. So, you know, people like the designers and stuff, you would be told, oh, we're actually not going to put this model into production. Oh, okay, cool. Can I get some cast stuff myself? Yeah, sure. Why not? So if you go onto eBay and type in like Warhammer Unrelease, you will actually get quite a lot of miniatures out there that were never released to the general public, <clears throat> but do actually exist out in the wild, if you will. They usually go for an exorbitant amount of money. So it is nice that Games Workshop are actually delving back into their vaults and pulling some of these old miniatures up and giving us the opportunity to buy them. Like one of the craziest ones that I ever heard of is if you actually type in Unreleased Dwarf Miniature, for Warhammer, you will see a plastic sprue. So they got as far into the production of a plastic um, dwarf lord slash thane on shield bear and with all the kind of options. And um, kind of like the Empire General kit where you got the one foot mounted. They did one for High Elves foot mount. They did one for Orcs foot mount. So this was the dwarf version or equivalent of that. <clears throat> and when we saw the Bretonian was coming back, me and my friends, the first thing we talked about was the fact that they are definitely going to release that sprue. It got all the way to a sprue being produced, which means they have moles for it and castings of it. And they just never brought it out. And I have no idea why they decided to do that. But now they've shown off the new dwarf releases. And we can now see that they are just bringing out a new dwarf lord on Shield Bear. So it looks like that old sprue is not going to be made available, which is sad. But like I said, if you go into Google, you type unreleased Warhammer dwarf miniature, you will see a sprue that somebody took and you can see all the different components in there for a plastic shield bear, great weapon, hand weapon, oat stone, <clears throat> all the other bits and pieces are there. And to me, I would love to know the story behind it. Because usually things don't go into production like metal miniatures, because it doesn't cost that much to get a rub rubber mold made for a, a metal miniature. So you can get all the way to like having a model casted 
and being like, no, it's not, it's not really what we want to do, it's fine, and then they just put it to one side, it didn't cost a lot of money. But to get a manufactured frame means that a, like a giant steel mold was created for this, properly machined, and those are very expensive. <clears throat> So if anyone has any idea out there as to why this model never made it to production, I would love to know that story. I'm just really nosy. Don't don't judge me. So obviously we've taken the orange up with the two thin coats range. I adore this range of paints and I've used it as much as possible. It has featured quite a lot in my Bretonian project <clears throat> for its kind of bright pastel colors and more muted tones and stuff like that, which have worked a treat for all the different heraldry. And also sticking with those same kind of tones across an army means they're gonna match in with each other a lot better. This orange and black scheme, like I said, was used for my Bretonian Grail Knight, one single dude. And then an awesome guy came out and showed me pictures of his army that he is following along with my guide and doing kind of like a large quantity of Bretonians in that same scheme. And I got really jealous because it looked so good, orange being my favorite color. So I've since done my Louis Leon Kerr, which is my Bretonian Lord on Hippogriff in that color. That was a, the last Bretonian video that I did. And now this Bretonian Lord on foot, I'm doing the same thing because I'm slowly but surely gonna build out a small kind of quarter of my Bretonian force to be this solid orange and black scheme. So definitely a unit of knights, unit of pegs, knights, unit of men at arms. And then a couple of characters, I think. Whether any more gets done, I'm very tempted to do the Grail Reliquy and all of the Battle Pilgrims in that same color as well. Maybe I'm insane, maybe that'll look awful. I don't think it'll look awful. I think it's gonna look awesome, but we shall see. As you can see, I'm now working up the last coat on the black, which is kind of the um, Dungeon Stone Gray, which I think adds a really nice tone to it. Obviously, it's a little bit brighter than black, but I think that's fine. Catachan Flesh to do all of the leather straps and the, the sheath, and of course, his beautiful leather gloves. Now I decided on this guy, as uh, the picture showed, he had a brown handle for his sword. Now I'm a big believer in doing that kind of screamer pink handle for swords. It's the only thing I may have kind of gone back and changed, is I might have given him that kind of standout spot color of pink. Which most of my like swords and lances, all my Stormcast handled weapons have, I really love it as a color for kind of the wraps on a, on a sword handle. The model is now kind of getting to the, the finishing stages. Now we of course had to work up that face that everybody in the world was worried about. They thought it was really like too narrow, sculpted really poorly. I thought when I first saw it that it may have just been the paint job was a little bit odd. And that's one of the more exciting things I wanted to do and tackle with this particular paint job is to see if I can make the face look nice by not kind of going overboard with it. Now he does have a nice goatee which covers up a lot so it is only like the forehead, the nose and the tips of his cheeks which are really on show with that so we shall see. Using silver as the final highlight on the gold and then obviously this is the final touch I'm going to do on this shield and what, what can I say, I love that shield. I wish that I could cut that off and cast up a hundred of them and use them for an entire Bretonian army. I think it looks beautiful. Um, I do have some blue stuff, so it's not an impossibility. And a 15 euro model, perhaps I could cut away the rest of it and try and save that shield. Who knows? Maybe that's a ridiculous thought, but whatever. <clears throat> Okay, so now moving on to the, of course, the two thin coats paints again for the skin. And as you can see, I'm just highlighting the cheek, nose, forehead, and then a little bit of the lips that show through on his face. And then, of course, I think the weirder thing sculpted on this guy is his fingers. His fingers are bizarre. <laughs> They're definitely not great. So I didn't want to paint them kind of too highlighted. I didn't want your eye to be drawn too much to those. But um, the sculptor definitely put, didn't put in a lot of time in with those hands. And I think that may have been the reason why it got kind of dumped at the last moment and brought in a, a beautiful Skaven sculpt to replace it because they thought that the certain parts of the model weren't particularly well sculpted. But here is the finished result. Here is my Bretonian Lord with great weapon painted up in my orange and black scheme. I did, uh, of, over the course of painting this guy, paint up the squire alongside him and I will show you him now. I love how that shield turned out. I love the design. I love the orange and black on him. I'm super pleased to have him in my collection. Here is the glorious little uh, squire carrying his helmet. Yeah, I'm super pleased. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, let me know if there's any other unreleased miniatures that you would like to come back or any old world content you want me to paint up. I pretty much have it all in my collection, so I'm sure there's something in there for you to paint. Just let me know what you want and I will have a route around. Well guys, he is now complete. I now have that Bretonian Lord with great weapon and squire. 
He's a bit young to be a squire. Maybe he's just a page so far. Um, is finished and ready for the tabletop. I'm super pleased to have these models in my collection. I said it before at the start of the video. It does mean the world to me. I am at heart a collector. I am a Games Workshop fanboy. I will, I will never deny that. I love the stuff that they do and the miniatures that they do. I think this guy's very reasonably priced, priced as well. He's only 15 euro for both the miniatures, which I think is really nice. So they didn't go overboard on that. Yeah, I will wonder what other gems there are out there that we will never get our hands on or what other gems we will get our hands on in the near future when they come back for the old world. I'm, I'm hoping that there is other things we will get. So excited for that. Very happy to have in my collection and to use them in a game sometime soon would be very cool. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a like. Ask me any questions you want in the comments below. I get back to everybody that does comment and make sure you're subscribed for all the future goodness, content and anything else coming up. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end. I'll see you in the next one.